all right welcome back to the channel warhammer man back in the studio and today we're taking a look at uh battle ready and parade ready and i'm going to talk about a couple of techniques for more of a traditional style and then also contrast painting as well if you're new to the channel and you like every single day update videos uh, reactions reviews news painting modeling conversion tutorials for warhammer 40,000, kill team necromunda age of sigmar war cry horus heresy make sure to like and subscribe really helps out the channel and it is absolutely free uh, feel free to leave your comments down below uh, if you agree disagree or have anything to add always like hearing back from the community uh, so kit citadel color just what is battle ready whether you're new to painting warhammer or you're an old hand with paint brushes you will have come across the term battle ready in games workshop publications before if a model is battle ready it means it's ready to game with hence the name battle ready models have their main area colored and a simple finish on their bases the standard is also the minimum you have to hit the play events at warhammer world to guarantee that every event has tables full of painted models to create the best gaming experience for everybody so basically just about slaying the gray so here we see a ultramarine in battle ready standard uh, so we see a couple of different colors on him obviously uh, you want to see at least a minimum of three colors and then you'd like to see something on the bases as well so uh, battle ready isn't a bar you have to pass to be allowed into our hobby uh, rather it's an achievable and universally recognized standard that means to say yes to your army yes to accessibility and yes to more games with more painted models battle ready is about making painting a celebration so i mean in my opinion i think it's all about like the immersion uh, so the most important thing, obviously, it's fun to play games. It's fun to paint for some people. For some people, it's not. Uh, but it's more fun for everybody if you play games and everything is painted. Uh, but in all reality, you know, it's like that uh, 10 at 10. You want everything to look good from like, you know, standing up at the table. It doesn't have to be like you pick it up and it looks amazing by any means. It doesn't need to be, you know, pro in a case like beautiful golden demon standard. It's just a matter of the game is more fun if everything is at least partially painted or painted to a minimum standard. So that's what Battle Ready is all about. And I actually agree with that assessment. It's so much more fun if everything is at least painted. It also shows people, you know, when your army is not painted and then you slowly work through the process, it shows that you actually care about other people and the enjoyment of their games. Because if you've ever played with your army and then you play against somebody and they have a completely gray army and then you play a game a couple weeks later and they've made no steps towards even trying to paint their army, it's still completely gray. Uh, it sort of gives you the idea like, hey, they probably just don't really care. Um, and, you know, that can take away from the experience for some people. So uh, this, I think, makes it a little bit more achievable. I think sometimes the biggest thing is just getting rolling on your paint job and getting started. And then you realize after a while it's not as daunting as it is when you start to just tackle it step by step. Uh, so how to paint Battle Ready. Uh, so Battle Ready is quick and easy regardless of your level of experience in painting miniatures. It involves using base shade and technical paints, the classic method, or contrast and technical paints, the contrast method, to bring your squad, army, or legion to a satisfying standard uh, that you can be proud of. Um, and you don't need a ton of paints to do either one of these styles. Uh, you can do it with minimum paints, depending on what you're painting. Uh, typically, you have one main color for your whole army, in this case, blue. And then you have a couple of accent colors, in this case, gold, black, and silver. And then probably going to want to, at some point in time, you know, do the basing, either with actual technical, like, base paints. Or you can do it yourself with, you know, just some gravel and, you know, glue, etc. So... Uh, so for the classic method, first thing you do is base your models all one color uh, and then add in a couple of base colors. So if you're doing, for instance, a army of space marines and you're doing, you know, all ultramarines, the best thing to do is find a nice colored spray that's going to basically take care of the entire first step of your army first. So maybe you want to prime them first and then go ahead and base them uh, with like a blue Maybe you can't get the exact ultramarine blue that you're looking for. Uh, but if you get something really close, uh, it's easy to go from there uh, if you want to. Uh, so in this case, you're adding in, you know, obviously the blue first, probably done with the spray can. And then you're adding in the silver, the gold, and some of the other details. And the next thing you're going to do is shade them. Now, to tell you the truth, shading is really not necessary for battle ready. I mean, it's good and it looks nice and everything, but it's definitely not necessary. Now depending on what level of shading you're going to do you can either slap one color shade over your entire model or you can be a little more specific and you know do different techniques 
I think for most people, if you just paint like a minimum three colors on your model and then you can hit it with a shade, that is pretty nice. And then if you just do some basing. So that for me uh, is a nice battle ready right there. These models look decent. They look good enough to play with. Uh, I think most people would be happy to have an army painted to that standard. And then you can always go back and add on later. So um, I'd say this is pretty good. Uh, the truth is though, if you didn't want to do the shade, I think it would be fully acceptable if you just have you know the the models painted with your base colors without the shade and then you base them um, now alternatively you can also base like make a bunch of bases separately and then just glue your guys to the bases as well so uh, base paints are bursting with pigment and let you back block out the colors you require and that's what it's really all about it's just about blocking out various colors shading adds definition to your models and now because the entire shade range has been reformulated to flow better in the recesses of your miniatures battle ready armies are faster to paint and look better than ever before so i haven't tested out the new shade paints yet i've seen a couple videos on them they look pretty good so far uh definitely looking forward to trying them out if they work more similar to contrast paints which is what is essentially being advertised uh, i think that's great uh, i was always happy with how shades perform before so if they're better that's great uh, so then next we have the contrast method so for the contrast method, uh, they have sprayed everything just completely white and then just lathering on the contrast. And then it's important when you use the contrast paints, I don't paint from bottom to top. I paint from top to bottom because as you're painting your model, so this in my opinion is completely wrong. As you're painting your models, gravity naturally is going to make the paint go down towards the bottom of the model. So if you paint from top to bottom, as you go down, the excess paint kind of runs down with it. So you can use that paint and continue to spread it out so you don't end up with like big dark puddles or like blotchy paint jobs. Uh, so that's a basic technique that everyone should do. And then at the end, if you end up with a bunch of extra contrast, you can kind of soak it up around, soak it up, uh, around like the feet and stuff. Uh, and then for the technical right after that, so obviously they're just doing the basing. So um, they kind of left out this step right here. So if you're going to do contrast, you have two choices. You're either going to do contrast on the whole basic model and then you're going to block out your details like the black and the silver and stuff like that. Uh, and you're going to have painted everything blue or you can paint with contrast and specifically dodge stuff that you don't want painted that initial color and then use other contrast paints on the details. The second technique is much more difficult. It is much, much easier to use a single contrast paint, paint from top to bottom and do your whole guy in one color and then go back with actual opaque paints, not contrast paints, and then do all of your like blocking out of like the bits on the shoulder pads, like the gold for the eagle, the gun, etc. Um, and then obviously, you know, your basing technique as well. So those, those are two important designations. It's actually a lot harder to paint exclusively with contrast paints because they're very unforgiving if you get it on the white areas uh, that were primed or based uh, that you don't want to be that color. So you then have to go back with white and try to turn them white again and then go back through with contrast. So contrast paints actually are the easiest when you use a contrast for your initial color and then you block out everything else with regular opaque or metallic paints, in my opinion. Uh, you can also use contrast paints for a different, more streamlined approach. These paints are designed to apply a wide range of colors to your model straight from the pot, changing a painting game by giving you a consistent, reliable result in a fraction of the time. Simply undercoat with Wraith Bone, Gray Sear, or White Scar and add one coat of contrast per color on your miniature. So I have said this multiple times, uh, but you don't have to use Games Workshop's spray. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of other spray cans out there that literally cost like between 2 and $4 uh, that perform as good or better with contrast paints um, or with regular paints uh, than the GW sprays. So, you know, I have used Krylon quite a bit. Uh, I have used Rust-Oleum quite a bit and have phenomenal results with those. So, uh, The 25 new contrast paints mean that no matter the color of your Legion, Army, Warband, Kill Team, or Blood Bowl Squad, you'll always have the right hue at hand. From ultra-vibrant colors like Eldari Emerald and Frostheart to rich, depending, uh, dependable hues such as Bale Red and Leviathan Purple. There is a choice for every situation. Uh, so to tell you the truth, if you're just looking to get your stuff like battle ready or even parade ready, chances are you probably don't need the new contrast paints because they're really just a bunch of like super bright stuff that kind of fills the gap with the old stuff. You're probably going to want more of like the traditional contrast or traditional paint line. Uh, and there are lots of cool starter sets out there uh, that work great to just get you going. Um, 
whether you have gone from a classic or a contrast to finish off all you need to do is apply a technical paint like sterling mud astro granite to the base to make it look like a miniature is standing on the battlefield and you're done uh, so as far as like the actual texturing of the bases there's lots of alternatives out there to games workshop products where you get like a big tub of you know sandy paint basically or like some other kind of like texture paint uh, for a fraction of the price you can also make your own uh, or you can just use you know a little bit of elmer's glue and slap some you know sand and some rubble in there i always recommend to use at least three different like types of basing material uh, just because it gives you a much more cool effect as you don't want just a uniform like sand like this because it just doesn't look realistic in my opinion uh, and just a handful of simple steps you've got a superbly painted miniature uh, ready to take to the battlefield and fight for victory in your name and with the release of the fantastic range of new contrast paints new and reformulated shades battle ready has never been easier to achieve uh, so here we see the classic battle ready and then we see the classic contrast uh, both look nice in my opinion uh, the classic battle ready looks better because this just looks a little too patchy to me and the color is not quite like your traditional ultramarines color uh, but both look cool both look cool i also think that this blue that they use all the time to show off is probably one of the worst contrast paints if not the worst one i'll repeat this a few times for a lot of times depending on your faction and soon you'll have a whole army ready to descend on the battlefield and make your foes tremble probably m remarking on how great the enemy look uh, even as they're crushed under your conquering brothel uh, so very cool so uh, let's take a obviously you can achieve a very nice effect uh, contrast paints work exponentially better on like organic material so if you have something like a dinosaur with scales or something like that i definitely would recommend contrast over traditional paints uh, but you can use your traditional paints and just do like a nice dry brush or a nice wash uh, without having to like go back through and highlight like individual scales so and then here we have a follow-up article a uh, citadel color what is parade ready uh, so painting beautiful miniatures is one of the most rewarding parts of the warhammer hobby whether you want to have the most gorgeous miniatures on the tabletop or just a collection you can be proud of uh, so here we see battle ready the next steps yesterday we talked about battle ready how to paint your miniatures and it's accessible standard uh, but what if you want to push your miniatures further it's time to explore parade ready uh, so obviously this is parade ready after you've painted your miniatures to the battle ready standard with a classic or contrast method then you're in a perfect position to elevate them to the next level this involves layer paints a vibrant range of colors designed to add richness to your miniatures once you've applied your layer paints you can then highlight the raised areas representing the way the light catches the edges. Highlights such as these simulate the natural uh, fall of light and shadow on larger objects at a reduced scale. This helps to bring your miniatures to life and makes them stand out even more. Uh, so here we have classic parade ready. So you had your battle ready model. Now you're going in and just doing edge highlights uh, essentially on your different colors. Uh, so you're going to highlight. You're going to highlight some more. You're after that going to highlight more and then dry brush your base so you're basically just highlighting your various different colors from blue you know then like the black or what i refer to as accent colors and then your gold and oftentimes after you have washed essentially the wash or the uh the ink or uh shade in this case sorry they've changed the name so many times over the years uh the shades basically have gone over everything and just kind of darkened it up so when you go through and highlight you can initially highlight with that same color that you use to begin with or a lighter shade or some form of a mix uh, and then dry brushing the base just gives it a little bit more texture again it looks very uniform so i would recommend some kind of like bits or like larger little rocks or something in there other than just a uniform sand uh, but it doesn't mean it's not going to look good you can also take extra bits from your sprues uh, you know guns or pieces of armor or you know mechanical bits and just kind of like mix them in with your basing uh, you can apply these extra steps to the base of your miniature too perhaps you want to apply a shade to the technical paint you've used for ground texture i'll uh, wait for it to dry apply your chosen shade and then apply a little dry paint with a dry brush for an additional highlight you can also use this technique to quickly and efficiently pick out texture details on the model such as chain mail and fur yep definitely and you know honestly even if you don't want to take it to the next level with your basing uh, at least slap a couple skulls on there because it makes it look more grim dark so uh, so then contrast ready uh, or contrast parade ready uh, so the next thing they're doing here is dry brushing uh, and then highlighting after that and then highlighting again uh, and then dry brushing the base 
So the difference being that they're basically taking a dry brush and using it on the edges as opposed to just doing edge highlights. Uh, you can use that same technique either way. For me personally, I like to paint everything one color and then dry brush it a lighter color and then shade it. And then if I'm going to do edge highlights, do it afterwards. But the truth is, if you dry brush and then shade over top the dry brush, it gives you a much better effect in the end, in my opinion. Uh, it doesn't have... There's other ways you can avoid the kind of like chalkiness or like kind of like sloppiness of dry brushing uh, that people don't really like. And in my opinion, the best way to do it is, is to dry brush and then shade uh, because the shade really just cleans up your dry brushing for you exponentially. And then when you come through with the highlights, it just looks much better. In my opinion, that's one of my techniques. Also, if you're using a spray can of paint that is not the exact color you want to finish with, uh, you could like say for instance spray your entire ultramarine army in like a darker blue because you couldn't find exactly ultramarine blue and then right afterwards you can take ultramarine blue and basically just like do a dry brush layer over the entire model and then the cracks the areas that you don't hit with the dry brush will be darker and then the whole model will be the correct ultramarine's blue and then after that you can dry brush again with a lighter color or something like that but you can achieve basically all the effects of a $30 can of paint or $20 can of paint uh, for essentially four dollars if you're just willing to go back afterwards and just do like a quick and easy sort of dry brush and it's a heavier dry brush uh, because you're essentially trying to cover up like 75 percent of the model with the correct color and then that way it makes it look like the whole model was painted that correct color uh, so that being said once you're here, you can start to use the other technical paints to add new details. Try some gore splatters with blood for the blood god, uh, metal weathering thanks to nail neck oxide, or puddles of corrosive poison with Nurgle's rot. Citadel color paints are designed to make each part of the process simple and satisfying. Once you finish, you'll have an army that you can exceptionally proud of, uh, grounded in the war-torn worlds of Warhammer, ready to face off against all foes. Getting your whole collection to a uh, stage can be can even become a basis of stellar armies on parade entry. Uh, so classic and contrast method. Uh, so when it's all said and done, which method looks better on a space marine? Honestly, I have to say the classic method looks better. Um, you don't have like the big pools. And again, this is one of the worst contrast paints. So I'm not sure why they always show it off, but you can always see like these really dark areas of pooling. Um, and I think that makes the contrast not look as good on organic matter I think it's the other way around the contrast will look better and the classic will still look good, but not as good uh, You can also use any contrast paints including the 25 dressing uh, Dazzling and diverse new colors to achieve unique effects at this stage One trick layer a brighter contrast paint over metallics to create a magical weapon or crackling power swords Yeah, and I think that's definitely true um, one technique that I like to use a lot with my contrast paints is if you don't have like a massive line of paints and you want to highlight after you do contrast paints and the next color you have say you have like the blue contrast paint and then the next color you have is like a baby blue uh, and it's like way way too light or it's too close to the color um, you can just mix a little bit I take my regular contrast paints and then I will just mix in a regular opaque paint that's like a lighter color with it uh, and that will just give me the perfect color to highlight with. So if I have a dark blue and I have a baby blue, I take the dark blue contrast paint, I mix in a little bit of the baby blue, and then I just highlight using that baby blue. And it comes off your brush nice and smooth. It's not going to act like a regular contrast paint, but it's going to give you basically the perfect highlight color because it has some of the original color in it. And I think that's where a lot of people like don't have the highlights that they're looking for because they're going from like too dark of a color to too light of a color and you need kind of like a medium color uh, to kind of like bring it in you don't want like a crazy contrast like of colors or of brightness uh, not contrast paints but crazy like actual color of contrast between your darkest area and your brightest area uh, and I think that really helps with it so both these look great and I'll be happy to play against uh, anybody that has their army painted to this level and then there's just a couple extra little like tips and tricks that you can do to take it to the next level uh, but the truth is I am definitely a proponent of people painting obviously I am a commission painter uh, so I understand it's not not everybody has the time the skills the effort uh, to paint stuff um, you know and I'm grateful for those people because they make what we do possible uh, but that being said you know it's much more fun if you do have painted models and oftentimes once you start to take the plunge and you realize how good of effects you can get how quickly and how much better everything looks uh, it 
usually encourages you to go further. I think a lot of times people without painted armies want everything to look perfect. And so like they sort of see like that barrier to entry to start painting because they want to get better before they paint. But the truth is you have to just paint to get better. And there's nothing wrong with having like an original unit you painted that doesn't look as great compared to a bunch of stuff that looks awesome because now you've painted a bunch along the way. So uh, the most important thing, in my opinion, is get yourself a couple paints. It doesn't have to be a ton. Get yourself a couple of brushes. They don't have to be fancy or expensive. You're going to ruin your first brushes. Get out there. Start painting. Start practicing. Start enjoying yourself. Look for painting tutorials, uh, you know, like cool little tips and tricks. Um, when it's all said and done, you will be much more happy and enjoy the game much more. Uh, if you do take the plunge and start painting so uh two thumbs up for parade ready uh you know and still two thumbs up for battle ready uh because anything painted is better than not painted so uh, let me know what you think down below uh, are you all about painting are you sometimes intimidated to take the plunge uh have you had similar experiences where you're intimidated at first and then once you started painting uh everything came out really well did you spend a bunch of money on a bunch of equipment you know paints brushes all the expensive stuff and then you find it hard to get started uh, or did you spend a bunch of money on a bunch of stuff and then realize that you only really needed a couple of those things i always like to hear back from people here guys opinions always glad to share all of our videos we show off uh, like the techniques that we use in our commissions i have a ton of tutorial videos on how to do white armor black armor how to airbrush things how to use you know highlighting followed by or i'm sorry dry brushing followed by a wash uh, I think the most important thing and the biggest change that I would make to this whole entire article is I would say that the two best things you can do to make painting easier for you and look better in the end, much, much better in the end, is either if you have an airbrush, airbrush and do some like highlighting with the airbrush or Zenithal highlight. Whether you do that with an airbrush or you do that with, uh, you know, spray cans, you can achieve very nice results, uh, especially with contrast paints if you use Zenithal highlighting. So I'm not sure why we never really hear about Zenithal highlighting or Games Workshop doesn't really use it or talk about it or anything. But the absolute best effects I have had with contrast paints is using Zenithal highlighting, contrast paints, and then going back afterwards and, you know, basically like doing the highlights uh, with either a mix or the next color in line. So um, definitely 100% proponent of Zenithal highlighting. If you don't know what Zenithal highlighting is, definitely get on that. Uh, but the idea is you're essentially just using, uh, like starting with say a black primer, and then you are sort of using like a gray or a white primer uh, from how the sun would be hitting your model to essentially create artificial lighting. And then when you use your, you know, your artificial lighting, obviously everything towards the bottom via gravity is going to look shadowed and then when you use your contrast paints on top of that it helps to create more of that blend uh, as opposed to like the stark differences between the bright areas and the dark areas so for instance on this guy's shoulder pad right here we see it's like pretty bright towards the top and it's very very dark towards the bottom with a nice zenithal it's going to help you to blend that because you're basically going to have a light to dark level already on the primer and then when you use the actual contrast paint uh, it helps to create like a blend uh, and in the end it leaves a much better effect so uh, let me know what you think down below that's it for today warhammer man studios i'm warhammer man always like to hear back from you guys if you enjoyed today's video make sure to like and subscribe make sure to check out all the various playlists we have uh, tons and tons of videos on how to uh you know convert paint uh, pretty much anything for the hobby uh, but uh, if you're into Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, and of course some Horus Heresy, make sure to like and subscribe as it greatly helps out the channel. Uh, that's it for today, Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and get your paint on.